Hello and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and today we are talking about the Kraken. I'm going to try my hardest during this video not to perpetuate the ongoing dad joke about the name of this watch. But here is Hampton Watch's newest version of the Kraken, the Kraken H2. After the success of their widely popular H1 series Kraken, the Kraken is back and stronger than ever. It is currently over on Kickstarter with 14 days left as of this recording. Now, there are a few things I'd like to say before I begin this video. First of which, thank you, Ross, for reaching out to me. I'm very flattered that uh, he and his team decided to send one of these models my way at the request of their fans, uh, folks that enjoy their watches, apparently enjoy this program, and they reached out because of that, and I really appreciate that team. Um, secondly, I would like to thank them for sending in a model, not only for review, but uh, they stated that they wanted to send me one as a gift. So, of course, take any of my opinions with a grain of salt now. Uh, they'll be sending me one of these white dial versions with a Salita movement just to enjoy. And, and more on that later, actually, I'm hoping to do a follow-up on this watch once I've had that piece in hand for a little bit longer period of time. I'll explain why later. But on top of all of that, they were courteous enough to add me on their kick booster program for the campaign. Of course, I'm a little late to the game here, but that is a-okay. If you guys were interested, ever interested in helping the channel out in any way, uh, this is a great indirect way to do so. If you happen to like this watch based off of my opinions, I'll encourage you to follow the kick booster link provided in the description, and I will receive a portion of the proceeds that go towards your purchase of a Hampton H2 Kraken. So with all of that out of the way, I have a lot to gain from this. And let me just state, best watch ever. My favorite watch. It's the only thing I've been wearing, honestly. No, it's, uh, <laughs> I've been wearing it. It's not the only thing, though. And I have enjoyed my time with this watch. I actually have a lot to say about this piece. But before we get into the bad, the good, and of course my final verdict, on this watch, I wanna talk about some of the changes moving forward. This watch has blown up in popularity since it hit Kickstarter. I believe they met the required goal well within the first like 10 minutes. Um, I actually have that site up right now. Um, yeah, but they're killing it. Uh, <laughs> Nearly $500,000 as of recording this of a proposed uh, pledge goal of 27,000. So obviously a lot of folks like this design and with good reason. Uh, but I wanna get into a lot of the updates and changes before I move on with this review. Obviously this is a prototype I have in hand. The production units are gonna be just a little different. Thank you, Ross, for keeping me abreast of all of the changes up to date. And he sent me a short list of info that he wanted me to discuss with you guys before I began this review. Obviously, the changes moving forward and uh, some of the highlights of this watch as opposed to the original H1 case. And although this is heavily inspired off of that model, it is a brand new watch. There aren't any spare parts that went into this piece's construction. Now, what I have in front of me is an NH35 version of this watch, which we'll get into it has a slightly different price point as opposed to the Salita SW200 model. But beyond the price point, this case measures about 13.5 millimeters thick. Well, do we note that the Salita versions will have a slightly thinner case. So if that matters to you, that is another reason to purchase the Salita movement instead. Also, if you are into Swiss movements, uh, if you imagine that has something to do with their accuracy or you just want the higher beat rate, the Salita version version will be the right one for you. I think the case thickness is the most notable change between the NH35 and the Salita, however. Pricing it originally started at £199 for the Seiko version and £299 for the Salita version, but currently pledges are at £239 and £339 respectively. Which by my calculation, if you're trying to purchase this with US currency, is right around $330 for the NH35 version, which I have in, and $450 for the Salita variant. Now, if you are following along over on Kickstarter for Hampton's campaign, you'll know that they are using a high grade of tough titanium for both the watch head and matching titanium bracelet. Though you may notice some scratches on my prototype here, the final versions of this watch will feature a generous layer of scratch resistant coating. So don't think those will wind up so easily on your watch. Again, this is just a working prototype and it will see a nice layer of scratch resistant coating once the production units roll out. 
Now, I have already gone over a lot, but there is just a little bit more I want to mention before we continue this video, as this is a Kickstarter campaign that is 16 days in. As of recording this video, there have been a lot of stretch goals rolled out, and I'm very impressed with how much Ross has been following along with this campaign and improving upon this design. I just want to go over a few of those stretch goal add-ons, and of course, we'll get into the review after that. The original Kraken H2 design would have only come with this basic stamped clasp, but ultimately you will receive a ratcheting clasp with the final production unit once those roll out. So when we look at this clasp, don't think that this is ultimately the product you will receive. They are upgrading the clasp for you. And also because they've met the stretch goal, there will be an integrated rubber strap with all watch purchases as well. They're gonna be fitted, adjustable, and made of high quality rubber. Now, unfortunately, I don't have one of those rubber straps in to show you, but obviously, if you are following along on the Kickstarter, you should be able to see those as they roll them out. It's to my understanding that they're making them right now. So, obviously, none of those will be in hand for any of us reviewers, sadly. Lastly, and what I consider the biggest improvement is the stretch goal to upgrade the bezel action. And this is, this is so awesome. Look, I don't mind 120 click bezels, and that's what this is. As a matter of fact, the bezel action here is really great. However, I won't be talking about the bezel action here as the new models will receive a 60 click ball bearing bezel. All amazing improvements so far and it's only getting better. This is a watch that you can get for sub $500, any version of it, and it's getting the pedigree of a watch that would normally cost so much more. So there's a lot to like about this current campaign. All versions of the Hampton Kraken H2 will feature a titanium case with matching bracelet, a loomed ceramic bezel insert with BGW9 Super Luminova at the helm. You have a sapphire crystal with internal AR coating, a 20 Atmos rating, obviously a screw down crown over at the four o'clock position, perfectly aligned, I might add. The case itself is 41 millimeters in diameter, 48 millimeters from lug end to lug end, and features a 22 millimeter lug width. The bracelet itself will taper down to a nice 20 millimeter width. Of course, all of the bracelet links are solid titanium, and the watch, again, will retail for just shy of $500 in the Salita version, and 330 in the NH35 version. So I just took a trip over to the Kickstarter and I noticed that this is even difficult for me to keep up with at this point. There is a new dial version made available for this watch. So beyond this beautiful snow white dial we have here and the black dial variant you can get, there's now a meteorite dial you can pick up for an extra 85 pounds. So if that tickles your fancy, go ahead and check that out. One of my first bad notes, and this is sort of a common complaint for me on the channel, and I know a lot of you guys share this same opinion as well, it is in regards to the male and female end links used. Now this is what you'd consider a male end link, that center link protrudes out to greet this oyster link bracelet. I much prefer a female end link where the center link of the bracelet greets that instead, and you know obviously goes through the spring bar and holds the watch case down. I don't like this form of end link as it extends the lines of the case in a not all too flattering way, at least in my opinion. I've never really enjoyed end links that look like this. However, the execution here is fine. It does a good job of not extending too far off the case, though I would have preferred female end links instead. My next bad note is in regards to the thickness, and I know I've harped on about it in regards to a few dive watches that have been featured on the channel as of late, but at over 13 millimeters thick, it is a tad thick in my opinion. And do bear in mind that these are, you know, utilitarian pieces. They're meant to be worn as tools, so their thickness shouldn't necessarily matter. But for a large majority of us, I think these are going to be commonly found as desk divers, less so diving tools. Um, so it, with that in mind, the thickness is just a little thick. And of course the NH35 version, as I mentioned off the bat, is 13.5 millimeters thick, roughly. The Salita versions, uh, I haven't been given an exact quote as they're still being processed, uh, but that's gonna be right around or a little bit closer to 13 millimeters thick. Um, I'm assuming it's gonna come off the case back. I imagine they'll just machine a slightly thinner back and or case back to screw on to the underside of this watch. Now, if you personally prefer a thinner watch, um, this is just over that mark in my opinion. Uh, there's plenty of dive watches that are 12 millimeters and under, but it usually has to do with the dimensions of the movement. 
uh, that usually dictates how thick the case must be. So uh, you're just going to have to, you know, find 13 millimeters agreeable for yourself. Uh, and with this watch, it hasn't been too much of an issue, at least not for me. Again, I've been wearing this with a t-shirt in most instances, so the thickness doesn't quite matter. And you know, I'm wearing a Seiko Tuna right now and this thing is a behemoth, so who am I to complain? However, I do know a lot of you guys prefer a thinner watch, even if it is a tool watch. So at 13, just bear that in mind, it is on the thicker side, even for a diver. Now it may seem like I'm nitpicking here and that may be true because I don't find too much at fault with this watch. However, I will state if you are used to stainless steel divers, the weight of this piece is going to be misleading. It's very light on the wrist because it is made entirely out of titanium and that commonly leads us to believe that the watch is cheap or of less build quality. Uh, or rather a lesser build quality when that's not the case at all. So um, if you purchase this watch thinking it's going to feel just like any other, you know, stainless steel watch you may own with the heft of a steel watch, uh, this is going to probably upset you in that regard. Um, if you've never owned a titanium watch, it's a completely different experience. So just expect it to be light on the wrist. Now this is neither a bad or good note. It's actually fairly neutral and Really great if you are a fan, I'm doing it again, of Seiko as a brand, but back in the 80s, Seiko produced a watch with a movement called the 7C43, and the particular model I'm thinking of is the 6A10. It was a mid-scale diver right around 38 millimeters in diameter, and it was actually made out of titanium as well with a matching titanium bracelet, but it had very similar case lines to this design. As a matter of fact, it also had a very similar dial to this design. Now the thing is, Seiko does not make that watch anymore. I wish it was still in their lineup. I know a lot of folks complain about the scale of Seiko divers just being too large. I feel like 44 millimeter in diameter is the average you know, diameter of one of their cases. So finding a smaller dive watch from their brand is really difficult. However, this is a great alternative if you are looking to get something that had that sort of Seiko influence, that Seiko design, in a new modernized package that is right at 41 millimeters in diameter. Very perfect size for most all wrist. Again, the language here is very similar to me. In particular, the case lines and the hour markers on the dial. Instead of having a somewhat Swiss look with the squared off rectangles, we have rounded pill-shaped markers at the three, six, and nine, and even a rounded triangle at the 12. Uh, I'm going to call that a Japanese thing. I've noticed that a lot of their designs, at least Seiko's designs, feature rounded and less um, edgy, less edgy dials as opposed to their Swiss counterparts. And I really like that influence here. It's just a good look. And I'm so happy to see this dive watch style back on the market with the Hampton Kraken H2. Now with all those notes out of the way, there is a lot to love with this design and I wanna get into that now, starting with that amazing dial. There are not enough white dial divers on the market. There really aren't. And I'm so happy to see this design hitting the market and it's such a handsome one at that. I love the black accents on the hour markers themselves. Obviously the handset is blacked out with that blue pip at the end of the seconds hand. The date application is perfect. You know, I, I hate offset dates. Uh, you know, dates that are at the 430 position between two hour markers are just very unappealing to me. But this setup here is gorgeous. It's in line with the rest of the markers and is recessed in the dial with a step actually, that gives it a really nice sense of dimension in relation to the rest of the dials, hour markers. It just sinks in, it's out of the way when you don't need it, and it's there when you do need it. And the date wheel itself falls perfectly in line with that window. Just everything about the execution of this dial is perfect, so I have to applaud them in that regard. As I mentioned before, the action on the bezel of this diver is excellent. However, you know, we can't really bear that in mind when taking this in as the bezel itself is being changed, but I can only imagine it getting better. 60 click is the way to go. The only reason people don't do 60 click is it's easier to do a 120 click. Tolerances on 120 clicks are less easy to screw up. So a 60 click bezel, they're gonna have to run some pretty tight quality control and making sure all of those are perfectly aligned as they're gonna rest 
on the minute or not rest on the minute. So, you know, I'm applauding them for that effort to put out a tighter bezel. Um, in my opinion, 60 click is always the way to go. It's usually found on more expensive models. I think one of the only watches I have that has a 60 click bezel is my Monta Ocean King. So, you know, and that watch is well over this price point. So good job on getting that upgrade to your Kickstarter customer base. The next good note I'd like to mention is with the crown allocation and the guards themselves. They do a fine job of blocking the crown on the case once it's secure, as well as allowing you access to the crown when you're setting the watch. Obviously, it's kind of the most important function of your watch, setting the time. That user experience is usually not discussed too much, I've found in reviews, but um, I think the crown diameter is perfect. I don't have the exact measurements, but it's very easy to grip on either or end of those guards. Sometimes you'll find the guards are too large and they get in the way of that interaction. But, you know, obviously setting the time and date is the most important thing you can do with your watch before you set it on your wrist. And uh, this makes that very, very easy. Um, also, uh, again, this is the NH35. I have to say the, the action on this is just fine. Um, it's probably only going to get better with the production units. I know this has exchanged a few hands, but everything is still up to snuff even after that fact. There's one other thing I want to touch on that I think is a really cool improvement to this watch, and that is the case back. It's one of the only things I didn't mention off the beginning of this video that is changing between this unit and the final production unit, but ultimately there's going to be a different case back on these. And this is a good note in my opinion. I think the additional branding back here is fine, but a little redundant. I really like how the new uh, logo, and I'll put it off to the side here. I, I think I have a PNG or I'll get one for you. Um, but there is the new logo off to the side uh, on the right hand side of your screen. And you can see that it highlights the namesake of this piece, the Kraken, you know, or at least their artistic interpretation of a Kraken uh, to be highlighted on the case back. It shows a little bit more personality than just the logo. And I appreciate it that much more. You know, I like a brand with a sense of humor. I like a brand with a little bit of heart. And it's fun to see that on the case back being highlighted. And I'm sure it's more exciting for you guys too. Let me know if you prefer the uh, current case back that you see here, uh, as opposed to the one they will be updating every one of their models with. Uh, would you prefer the additional logo on the back or would you have preferred the Kraken? Or rather, I mean, you're getting a Kraken, so um, that is just how it is. Let me know which one you prefer and why. Titanium case, titanium bracelet, super light on the wrist, all those things are highly favorable to me. And it's unfortunate, I haven't been able to find a titanium design that I really loved, so I've never held onto one, but this is obviously bringing me back to that Seiko 7C43 that I used to own. Uh, the only reason I sold that is the 38 millimeters was just a little too small on my wrist. However, 41 with this scale and this weight is just so pleasant on the wrist. And what's also nice is, you know, if you don't like the titanium bracelet, they've made it pretty easy to get off um, if you wanted to with those drilled lug holes. Again, this is a feature I think should be featured on every single uh, utilitarian piece, uh, be it a diver, a flieger, what have you. I like being able to easily access those spring bars and remove them uh, given those holes in the side. It's just a cleaner way to remove your bracelets. You're not fidgeting with the back of these uh, watch heads, scratching them with uh, you know, some fork end of a spring bar removal tool. You're just going in there with a prong to remove the bracelet. It's just far more convenient. And if you've owned a watch without spring bar holes uh, or rather drilled lug holes, as opposed to one, um, you know, without them, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is just a convenience that needs to be added on more watches. And without further ado, before I give you my final verdict on the Kraken H2, I want to provide you all with a wrist shot so you can see what this might look like on your wrist. Again, thank you, Ross, for sending this my way. Um, you know, he, he was as timely as he could be about it. Uh, it was my goal to um, review this a little bit earlier in the month, but it got hung up. And he was so good about uh, keeping in touch with me in regards to the project and making sure that I got this in hand in a timely fashion. So I had enough time to spend with it before I gave you know, you all my opinions of it. Uh, so I really appreciate that. So if he's any bit near as attentive with how he was with me, with his customer base, I'm sure it's gonna be widely appreciated. And obviously that's why his Kickstarter is so popular right now. 
um, because of that nature. So thank you so much, Ross, for getting this out to me for review. Here is the Kraken H2 on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. And this is what it'll look like for all of your admirers. And when you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. And here is the Hampton Kraken H2 on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. When you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a whole heck of a lot like this. That white dial is the one I would recommend. And as a matter of fact, it's the one I'm having sent in to me after this review. Again, Ross team over at Hampton, thank you so much for setting me up with this review piece. I have really enjoyed my time with it. Now, uh, here's the part of the video where I tell you that I'm not gonna provide a loom shot with this, as again, this is only a working prototype. What I wanna do is collect all your thoughts and feelings on the piece after this review, if you've backed it up on Kickstarter after the Kickstarter's over, and after you've spent just a little bit of time with your own Kraken H2. I'd love to know your thoughts and any of your concerns because I'm gonna do a follow-up video once I receive my production unit with the Salita inside to give you a little bit of my feedback on the improved case, the improved clasp, and obviously the loom on the final production units. Um, I've you know not noticed any issues with the loom here, but again, this isn't what you'll ultimately receive, so it's not of any benefit to you. However, I'd love to share your thoughts and opinions of the watch after some time in that follow-up video. And of course, some of my own opinions of the piece after I've had some time with it. So a little bit of a retrospective review to see if it was worth going into the campaign. So something a little bit different than the usual review on this channel. And again, I'd love all of your opinions on this watch before then. So feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. So for those of you backing the Kickstarter campaign, are you anxious to get yours in? Are you excited for the new Kraken H2? Let me know in the comments section down below. And also if you're on the fence, has this video helped you at all? Are you planning to hook your brother up by going through the link in the description? Well, that's entirely up to you. But if this video did help you, of course, feel free to help me out by using that kick booster link. And of course, if you just wanna pick this watch up, do it any way you choose. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on this watch. I'd love to get your opinions. Am I too much of a Seikoholic? Does this not really look like the 7C43 to you? Let me know as well, but it is giving me those vibes and it's one of the reasons I really like this watch. This watch has been widely popular well before I voiced my opinions of it here on YouTube. Heck, within the first four minutes, they received 100,000 pounds on their campaign, so they clearly didn't need my help. And on that note, I'd like to thank Ross for hooking me up with this piece, obviously the unit I'll be receiving, and also that kick booster. He did not have to do that. Uh, that just goes to show how much he's behind his product. He really thoroughly believes that this is going to be a top seller, and thus far, it has been. You do really have something great on your hands here, so, Thank you again for sending this out my way. What can I say? I'm really happy Hampton released the Kraken. I did it, I had to do it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But this watch has been a joy to wear and have for the time being. I'm gonna be sending this back soon, but if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a whole heck of a lot like this. If you have friends, forms, or groups that are interested in getting into this Kickstarter campaign while it is still up, well, feel free to share this video with them so they can get another consumer's opinion on the Kraken. Also, if you're new to the channel, well, welcome. I do videos like this monthly, so if watch content is your thing, feel free to slam that subscribe button. While you're down there, you can the little bell icon just next to that to be alerted as to when my videos air. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette and thank you for the time. Again, if you have never worn a titanium watch, this is gonna be a otherworldly experience. You know, especially with a watch of this scale, you'd think it would have so much heft on the wrist, but it's as light as a feather, and that's what makes this so superiorly wearable, any titanium watch, as a matter of fact, uh, as opposed to something made of stainless steel or other heavier material. Again, I just can't believe the price, particularly the super early special limited edition birds that got in on these, they got an amazing deal. And the deal is only getting sweeter as those stretch goals keep getting fulfilled. I'm very excited to see what he does next with those goals. And something I didn't talk about during the video, what do you guys think about that colorized blue pip? It is loomed out, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Um, but uh, do you like it? Do you dislike it? It is an odd ice blue, but that touch of color I, I particularly enjoy. 
I also like the alignment of it on the loom pips. It's slightly, slightly off center. You'll see here, it doesn't quite line up with those hour markers. Um, I feel like it could have been extended just a little bit further out to match those and also just hit that uh, chapter ring. But it's, you know, again, it's not the end of the world that those hands don't extend out to uh, overlap the hour markers. It's just a little design detail that could have been altered. As it stands, it still looks really great. And as a matter of fact, the hour and minute hand are perfectly scaled in my opinion. But the blue pip is going to be off-putting for some, I imagine. You know, particularly because you have this monochromatic dial, just black and white, and then there's that shock of blue color. But I actually really dig it. it you know, it sort of breaks up uh, what could be otherwise considered a, a boring looking dial, well, just a colorless dial. Uh, but I do love that that look. It's very reminiscent of those uh, Polar Explorers Rolex does too, I have to say, with the black accenting of the hands and our markers themselves. It's such a handsome look. And anyway, I can't wait to get my model in and, and do the follow-up review. You know, it's uh, something I'm very anxious to see in person. Um, I'm curious as to how the Salita units uh, will look and feel on the wrist just being a little bit thinner. You know, this doesn't feel overly thick, but um, it does wear taller than many of my pieces. And, uh, you know, I'm just accustomed to having thinner watches. Obviously, the, the big boy in my collection is my Seiko Tuna, and I love that thing to pieces. So, you know, this is very easily passable for me so far as uh, dive watches are concerned. And anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do check out the Kickstarter campaign and make that purchase, thank you so much. You know, obviously, you don't have to do that, but do know that it does help out the channel a whole lot. So thank you if you do hop aboard via the link down below. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel and obviously this video. Take care, and I'll talk to you on the next one.